130,000 in one week, which was with one single product as well. In today's video, we get to interview a seven-figure dropshipper, Peter Pru, and he's gonna give us some insights on how to start and scale dropshipping stores. Peter, thanks for accepting the interview. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to be on, and hopefully, I can, uh, you know, share some insights on really the ten plus years we've been doing e-commerce. You know, for those people maybe just getting started, and those people that are, you know, maybe struggling to scale. So, thanks for having me on. First, can you give us a bit of background on your e-commerce journey? Yeah, I'll, I'll try to make this really, really brief because it's been, you know, quite the journey. Basically got started with the whole make money online space about 13 years ago when I was in college. Uh, my roommate at the time was uh, doing affiliate marketing. Basically, we were doing these top 10 blog posts and lists and ranking them on Google and putting our affiliate links uh, in them and making, you know, commissions. We were making about like two, three hundred dollars a week. And in college, that was a lot of money for us. Um, ended up graduating college, still had to go work full time. I was still doing like the affiliate marketing on the side to make a few hundred bucks, uh, you know, a, a week, but it wasn't enough, obviously, to, to be able to, you know, do this full time. And around that time, I, I learned about Amazon. Um, and Amazon was really my first kind of step into uh, e-commerce, specifically like selling my own physical products. Uh, and to make a long story short, over the next year, maybe two, three years, um, I built an Amazon business that was doing between $80,000 a month and $100,000 per month. Thought I was the king of the world. I was like, this is absolutely incredible. I finally figured this, you know, entrepreneurship thing out. However, a competitor came on our listing at the time and said, hey, we're afraid on patents that they have. And these were, there were no patents at all, right? Uh, but the thing about Amazon is they're not going to get caught up in legal battles between sellers. They shut my uh, account down or pulled all my listing. They suppressed all of them and they make the sellers then hash it out and figure it out, which took us almost a year just to get our account back to prove that there were no patents and that this was just purely, you know, malicious attack on our company. So their, their listings now get pushed to, to make sales and really Really felt like a kind of like a depressed hole in my life during that time because it's like you lose something that you work so hard towards but I learned a really valuable lesson I think is very valuable to everyone listening is that when you're selling on Amazon you're only building Amazon's business right you're not getting customer lists like I, there was no way for me to contact my customers let them know what happened um business was literally shut down like there was nothing else like I didn't have my own website or funnels or anything like that back then um, and at that time, probably a year or so went past where I kind of was just like, you know, just got into a rut. I, I just wasn't really starting anything and just kind of, you know, had all my money tied up in this Amazon business. All there was a mess with all the inventory that was stored with Amazon. It, it was a whole a whole mess. But then I started getting into, you know, building my own websites, my own stores. And uh, I started a subscription box business in the fishing space. Um, I was selling a subscription uh, uh, for fishing lures on the front end, right? So a lot of you guys probably know Dollar Shave Club BarkBox. They sell a subscription on the front end of, of their offers. And I was like, I'm going to do the same. That's awesome. I want reoccurring money. Uh, now, the problem with the subscription box business, and this is what I quickly uh, found out, is a lot of these companies, because people don't like being subscribed to things, right? They, it's difficult. It's difficult to sell a subscription, right? Because people don't want, it's like another bill. Nobody wants to pay their bills, right? What I realized at that time is I had to basically give away my first or first month box for free. Right. So I was doing like five dollar, you know, uh, introductory box, you know, and I was losing money. You see Dollar Shave Club, you know, Bark Box doing the same thing. They're like, hey, get the first month for, you know, ten dollars. They're losing money there after product cost, shipping costs. They're not making money. They just know that they're delaying gratification until like month six, seven, where they're then they're recouping their money. And now they're making money because they know what their churn rates are and all that. Right. So I was like, I'm going to do the same strategy. But I didn't understand how that worked. I was losing a ton of of money, right? And this works for these big subscription box businesses because they have a lot of money. They usually have some investors, they're venture backed already, so they can withstand basically losing a ton of money for months on end, 
right? But the small guy really, it's tough for. And I know I'm kind of ranting here, but I think this will be valuable to everybody. Um, and then at that point, I uh, started learning about funnels. I was in a mastermind at that time. Um, I never understood what a sales funnel was. I, like That was so foreign to me. I had no idea what direct response marketing was. I was just that run-of-the-mill e-commerce seller, loading a product on a store, selling it on a store, selling the subscription, right? Just basic stuff. Uh, but when I learned about like funnels and stuff, it, it was, I can sell the same products, but I'm just selling them differently. Um, so again, lots of testing during this phase of learning funnels, but what really blew us up uh, to get to us that seven-figure level um, uh, the, at that time for that business is instead of selling the subscription on the front end, we started running uh, free plus shipping offers and deep discount funnels, um, where basically we were saying, hey, get this premium fishing lure completely for free, just pay a small shipping fee, so we can at least cover our, our initial costs on the front end, and then we would send them through a funnel, right, where there's one-click upsells, one-click downsells, and then the key, the one-click subscription, right? So now we were getting basically free monthly subscribers. Previously, we were paying $40, $50, to get that monthly subscriber. Now we were breaking even on the front end product, right? We were doing a free plus shipping on fishing lures. And then we make our money back through, you know, the average cart value and lifetime value through the upsells. Plus now we are getting the free monthly subscriber uh, if they join the, the subscription plan. It was just a different methodology of, of selling online. And that's when things really, really took off. You know, um, I ended up, uh, post, I was in a subscription box mastermind at the time and I was showing pictures uh, from our warehouse uh, uh, every month. I was like, look at the stacks of boxes going out every single month. We are like, they were like, what the hell did you do? Like, because I was there when I only had like 50 subscribers showing them 50 boxes. And then there was like 600 every month, 1,000, then like 1,500, 3,000, right? And then there was just, it was just blowing up really, really quick. And uh, I uh, was sharing them, you know, just in that in that group. I was like, I'm, let me show you, right? And I was just using YouTube as a place to just upload some, some tutorial videos of how I was doing funnels. You can look at these to this day. They're not polished or anything. I was just in a mastermind sharing it. Uh, and uh, one of the guys was like, hey, you know what, man, just just do this for me, right? Just do this for me. And he was like, I'll give you $500. I was like, really? You'll give me 500 bucks to build a funnel for you? I already love doing it, right? And that's kind of how e-commerce empire builder started about like six or seven years ago now. But uh, uh, sorry for the rant, but uh, that's kind of condensing, you know, 13 years down into a few minutes. Oh, yeah, no worries. So e-commerce empire builders is more like a community. Would you say? Uh, so it started as a community in the beginning. Um, and then we kind of, we sold like courses and stuff because, you know, people were asking because it's different. Um, but we kind of stopped doing the courses and stuff like that. We're more of a, an agency now. I hate to say that, but we are um, where we will, you know, we build funnels, we manage ads, we manage social media, we manage your email marketing, uh, pretty much a, a one-stop shop for all things e-commerce as far as marketing is related. Uh, and that's kind of where our entire kind of like model ha has gone for, for e-commerce empire builders. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I'll leave a link uh, over here, guys. Um, You guys can check out e-commerce Empire Builders uh, if you want uh, after you finish this video. Um, And Peter, like, did you do you still continue doing that subscription box business or have you transitioned away from doing it? Yeah, so that one I kind of had to transition away from. Um, there's a long story here that I can't get too into. Um, I ended up starting another uh, subscription box fishing business, but the first one uh, that uh, had to hit the seven figures, um, you know, I had some bad business partners at the time. And yeah, I can rant about business partners. You know, they overpromised, underdelivered. I was still doing pretty much all of the work in it. Um, so I shifted my role and I kind of abandoned them. And I started another fishing bit. Fishing is my passion. That's usually where I recommend people start with their business. I, I always loved doing it as a kid. Um, so I started up my uh, another fishing business that I grew to the seven figure level, not currently running it right now, because we're really heavily involved in our supplement company that we're running. Um, great margins in the supplement business. Uh, so we kind of really shifted probably six, seven years ago, probably during that time, e-commerce empire builders started to more so focus in on supplements um, as opposed to fishing lures. Right, right. And could you tell us like what your your biggest months were, um, how your biggest successes looked like? Yeah. So our biggest successes as far as e-commerce are concerned or our biggest like months 
Actually, I might say, I'll tell this story. This is a good story. I think people will help because we did probably 130,000 in one week, which was with one single product as well. And I want to kind of hit on this, why you want to be like passionate and enjoy your niche. So basically what happened, this was a few years ago, was I was in these Facebook groups. I was always in the groups like just lurking. I wasn't posting, but I was watching what is what are my people buying? Because those are your customers in these Facebook groups. They're in there congregating. And there was this fishing lure that came out. Um, and it basically was like a frog, but it had like these things on the back of it. And then it had this other thing on the front of it that spun on top of the water. Nobody was selling something like this, right? Ever. Um, so one of the guys posted, he's like, well, where can I get this fishing lure? One of my friends had one and he made it. This guy made this fishing lure. So nobody could get it. And I took uh, this picture and people were freaking out about it. They were like in the comments, like, where do I buy one? Where do I buy one? There's thousands of likes on this. It was, it was really going viral in like the bass fishing world. Um, so I, I sent a picture to it, to my supplier and he was able to make it for me. And this thing just absolutely took off. We did a test order of it for like a thousand units. Uh, just this, I wanted to make sure it's sold. And I don't remember the exact amount of units we've sold, but like, I, I think of just that product, at least 100,000 units over the lifespan of that product. I ended up getting knocked off a ton by other competitors and stuff. It's a very popular product even to this day. Uh, but that week was just the in most insane week uh, of of business that that we've really ever had for one single product. Amazing. Uh, how about the challenges that you had, like when selling that type of product or even other products that kind of beginners or even sort of intermediate e-commerce entrepreneurs can kind of expect? Um, yeah, when you're at getting scale, when you're, yeah, that, that it's just logistics at that point, right? Like we didn't expect, you never expect to sell that much. So there was a lot of you know, emails that we had to send out to customers because we kept selling out of it over and over and over again. Um, so we would have, there was a lot of customer service issues, like, hey, orders are delayed. And we were just honest with people. A lot of people drop ship, beginner drop shippers, you know, they're slow shipping times, all the, the common stuff. Um, but just be honest with your customers. We were telling them, hey, like, hey, your lures and your fishing stuff is on the way, but there are going to be some delays. Um, one thing that always worked for us is we would show the behind the scenes of the products being made made um i don't i can't tell you why it works but it works so well people are more willing to wait for their products right if you show them behind the scenes of it actually being made be like hey your product is now doing you know is in production here i want to show you some pictures of our factory you can get all this stuff from your supplier as well um so we those were the biggest challenges logistics obviously sales was not a, a, an issue there um it was just mainly just logistics and production Right. Yeah. You you mentioned, yeah, logistics and production being a major hurdle. Uh, so would you recommend that people start with dropshipping in the beginning to get started with uh, e-commerce or do you recommend they buy uh, products in bulk? Yeah, it, I wouldn't do inventory unless you're kind of understand what you're doing, right? Because you don't want to risk, right? Dropshipping is nice because it is an easy business model. Because all it really does take is your time and like a little bit of money. Like it, it really isn't an expensive business model to start. That's why so many people start it and so many people fail it. Um, but yeah, I would recommend doing like you know, uh, you know, sale who right. There's so many different kind of suppliers that you can that you can use as your dropshipping source. Personally, you know, right now we don't really source much inventory, even for our supplements. We actually do, can do them on demand. Right. So like it's it's not like we have to buy inventory. I I hate risk like that personally, because you don't know necessarily how well a product is going to continue to sell. Right. It might you can look at like Google Trends and pass data from your business, but you don't know for a hundred percent certainty that's going to continue to sell. So everything right now, we really heavily leverage uh just the drop shipping model. Um, you know, we manage hundreds of client stores for them, pretty much all you know, drop shipping related uh, that, that we focus on with them. Actually, Sailhu, we recommend that drop shippers or e-commerce entrepreneurs start with drop shipping just to test the market. Um, mm -hmm. And then once they need to scale, then they can transition into buying wholesale uh, because you want to make sure that there's that proof of concept that the product you want to sell um, is something that is in demand. Uh, so we have like a few products for that. We have Sailhu Dropship to allow you to integrate pre-vetted AliExpress suppliers products to your Shopify store. And then when you're ready to scale, you can go on and proceed with the sale directory, which has wholesale suppliers. We have mm -hmm. like 8,000 plus 
pre-vetted wholesale suppliers from all over the world so you can find the local wholesale supplier to you so you can get fast shipping times you can get your product to your uh, to your own warehouse or to your 3PL have it shipped quickly to customers and you can even lower your cost of goods sold and increase mm -hmm. your profits by buying in bulk with the sale yeah and directory. I actually I have used Sahu in the past I love the uh, the directory side of it because again that's that's the model that we also recommend as well it's like as your business scales right and you want to do like custom stuff custom branding things like that right you're going to want to shift into working with a supplier directly right and it's funny when i was using sailhu um it like a lot of the suppliers that i use for my fishing business in the directory were in there like it was funny like they were actually oh, wow. in there as well so the, the it is a great a great tool especially you know for for somebody that's just getting started the progression right because there is a progression right you're starting with like the you know the just the the on-demand kind of just normal drop shipping model figuring out who your winners are. And then you want to add some character to your brand and start really focusing in on brand. And that's when you could start shifting into, you know, buying some inventory. How does a, a dropshipper differentiate between what's a good product to sell and the bad product to sell? Like, how would you go about doing your product research, figuring out whether it's something you can or cannot profit from? Yeah, I mean, th there's so many tools right now. I don't, I, I'm not going to mention any paid ones, but you can use like Facebook ads library, TikTok creative center. Uh, you can use a lot of those tools to see. As a beginner, I say this, if you're a, a veteran and you kind of you have a gut feeling that this product will work, but you're not seeing anybody selling it, go for it because you kind of understand your niche a bit better. It's like me with that fishing lure. I had no idea. But I had no sales data to back up my decision that this was going to work besides a bunch of likes and comments on a Facebook post, right? Um, but yeah, I would uh, I would recommend going and seeing on uh, uh, short form content like TikTok and Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, and see what ones are getting a ton of engagement socially. That's usually a good indicator uh, of a of a product that you you know it should sell well. That's I, I want some sort of data to back up the decision. Right, and once they found the product, how do they go about testing it? So, uh, let's talk about like testing and scaling. How will they go first about testing the product? Yeah, so I mean, me we personally use a, a, a software platform called StoreFunnels.net that we've developed, and it combines stores and funnels because every e-commerce business needs funnels. Even Shopify released an article that every e-commerce store needs sales funnels, but it's very expensive to build on their platform. Um, personally, product testing. You, uh, if you have an email list already of non-buyers, okay, this is key non-buyers you could do a simple product page promotion 50 percent off free plus shipping just si simple right very simple sent to them now the reason we're sending to the non-customers is because if you send it to your customers of course they're going to buy they're your customers they, they get the second yes is way easier the first yes is the hardest so usually we like to test on our email list of non-customers uh to see hey will this product get that person over the edge to finally get into like the customer list uh, so that's where we usually like to start. If you obviously are a beginner, you have no no list, you have no assets, no nothing. Yeah, I mean, you gotta, you kind of have to put some money behind something, right? You can, if you're really on a budget, you can go with like influencer shout out pages. Um, they work well. I've done a lot of challenges on our YouTube channel doing that and had some decent success. Hard, harder to scale. You could scale it just harder because there's more like logistics, communicating with all the influencers and stuff. Um, or you could go personally, I'd recommend TikTok ads or um, like Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts um, as a beginner because it's short form content, it's it's punchier and like UGC style uh, ads just have been working really well and are probably going to be working really well for a while. Right. And then once they found out that that product is a winner because, you know, it's been getting a lot of sales and getting a lot of traction and people are buying it. Um, how do they go about scaling your store? What are the steps you would advise? Yeah, so the you need to have every like a good foundation in place. So number one, um, again, you'll you'll hear lots of different things from lots of different people. This is just my recommendation: is you need to make sure you have a, a proper sales funnel in place. All your cold traffic needs to go to a funnel, not a product page. If you're sending them to a product page, you only really get um one touch point, maybe two, right? Think about this, right? When you, they go to a Shopify store, you send them to their product page, right? They have to click add to cart, then they have to go to the checkout page and they have to fill out their uh, 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 shipping information. Then they have to fill out their billing information, click compete order. There's like six or seven buttons that they have to click to get the buy. With a funnel, it's two, right? I send them to a funnel landing page where I, I show them one specific offer, 
right? And I ask them for their email address and phone name, email, phone number, right? I've now created an asset. I can follow up with this person, text, email, right? I have their name. I can put them through different email automations on the back end and text automations on the back end. Then they go to the order form checkout page. Uh, this is where you will present them an opportunity to purchase, right? Um, whether they buy or not, though, you've already got an asset on your business. Um, so we do quantity break discounts for the product. Always do quantity break discounts. We always do one, two, four, six, eight works amazingly. Put a nice highlighted box around the four options. You will immediately make more money that way. It just works. Um, order bumps, pre-purchase upsells, like a little check box um, that they would click to add in. And then obviously proper upsell and downsell sequences. You could split test this. Uh, I always like to have at least two upsells. Um, you could set if your product leans towards being more of a consumable or something they need more of, I recommend selling more of the same thing that they just bought on the front end, right? A lot of people make this mistake and they, they are often are like, why would I sell them more of what they just bought? Because that's what they're sold on. They saw an ad for a specific offer, sell them that offer and then sell them more of it. That's what they're already sold on. If you introduce a whole new product in your upsells, right? You now need to st restart the selling process over again right? They're already sold on this. So sell them that on your upsell. So I usually like to do quantity break discounts on the first two upsells, downsell sequences, and then we'll do the subscription upsell. You need to have subscription in the business, right? So you're not starting every month at zero, right? It's a terrible place to be because then you're just fighting for new customers over and over and over again. Like that's not what you want to do, right? Like imagine I sleep so much better at night knowing that we have rebills coming in each and every single month. So whether it's a slow month or not, I don't really care because I'm going to be making money anyway, right? So it helps your business tremendously having your uh, subscription in it as well. Um, so yeah, you need a proper uh, sales funnel, obviously scaling, um, whatever your ad platform is of choice, try to maximize it the best you can. I usually recommend before going onto another platform, um, at least be spending close to $100,000 a month on that platform. You could probably start looking at different ones if you want to just do retargeting, right? So if you're selling, you know, on Facebook, right? You could start, you could kind of toss Instagram in there as well. Um, and the reason I say that is because if you go in there and you're not, if you haven't hired somebody to run your ads, which I definitely recommend, like that's a scaling key, right? Don't try to do all these ads yourself as a CEO, right? Like what CEO is running their own ads? No one. Like it ain't, it's not happening, right? Um, but uh, yeah, you, I, I do recommend once you start getting closer to fifty to hundred thousand dollars per month in ad spend, uh, you can start looking at different platforms and more importantly, hiring somebody to manage your ads. Hi, like our ads managers that we have here, they live and breathe this stuff. How are you going to compete? against them that are constantly taking courses, trainings, everything, right? In these ads managers all day, because that's what they're passionate about, right? Absolutely critical. Um, so yeah, does that answer your question? I know I kind of went on a little right oh, no, no, there. No, no, it totally did. The Definitely automation did. of this is key. Like me personally, I don't do much every single day. My focus is ideas. I come up with ideas. And then if, I, if an idea takes me to actually be the one to do it, I won't do it. Right. I need to be able to have people or, you know, different AI tools that, you know, that, that we're using to be able to do do this stuff. Right. Because you're the CEO. You need to free up your 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 time um, and not be focused in on like the nitty gritty details of working in your business. This was a concept that you're going to have to grow into. I you know, everybody's read like the E-Myth and heard hey, don't work, you know, in your business, work on it. Terrible advice for a beginner because you have to work in your business. Really only the last, like, I would say like six, seven years that I've really started working on my business because I had the money to be able to hire people. Like you don't have the money as a beginner to hire people to do all the ins and outs of your business, right? Especially good people at that. So um, that's a key to scaling. Like for me, it's ideas. Uh, I, I love coming up with new ideas and then seeing that come to fruition and building teams um, around, uh, you know, around an idea and watching them execute and just advising. That's what you should be doing as a CEO anyway. You should really just be the one kind of just making sure uh, the project is going according kind of to your vision. Um, yeah, that's the end of this interview, uh, Peter. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Um, and I think our viewers would have gotten a lot of value from this interview. And just want to say thank you again for hopping on the interview. Is there anything uh, you want to mention as well or um, any challenges you have that you want to let the viewers know about? 
no, no challenges right now. Again, a lot of our stuff is just AI related. But if you guys want to check out some of the other stuff that we're doing, you know, we buy and sell e-commerce businesses. Um, we have software, we have trainings, you know, so you guys can check it out, peterpru.com or, you know, check out e-commerce empire builders. I think, especially if you want to learn more about like funnels for e-commerce, we that's what we've been talking about on our channel uh, for basically ever um, just straight to the point content, uh, you know, no Lambos just occasionally, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's there to, to help you guys. All right. So go check it out. And I, uh, you know, I, I'm thankful that you had me on this podcast and I'm uh, hoping I can shed some value with everybody. Mm -hmm.